Hi, this is Joan Hunter. Welcome to another exciting episode of Miracles Happen. Today, I have a very, very special guest all the way from England to speak to you and to share with you her heart, my heart. It's going to be absolutely amazing, Joe Naughton. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome to Miracles Happen. Joan Hunter has been traveling the world in the healing ministry for more than 45 years. Be aware of what the enemy is trying to do to you and say, no more. She is hosted around the world for healing and miracle services because wherever she goes, miracles happen. Joan shares her tenacious faith in how to pray for the sick. Bringing people here and sending them out to the four corners of the earth. That's my job. She traveled the world with her parents, Charles and Francis Hunter, for over 30 years. I expect a miracle tonight. Joan sees healing, signs, and wonders happen all the time in the name of Jesus, and she wants to share this with you. As anointed as I am, so are you. Whether it's filmed on location at Joan Hunter Ministries in Tomball, Texas, or from around the world, you can be sure to hear good news and receive the resounding message that miracles happen. God has anointed in the area of healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. So stay tuned and join us for this week's extraordinary episode of Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles Happen. I want to share a tool with you. When I started my healing journey, this is what I would do. You know, there's a story in the book of Genesis, chapter 25. And it is when Isaac and Rebecca were married. They'd been believing God to have a baby. Rebecca got pregnant after 20 years of, of, of waiting and believing. But then something didn't feel quite right. We don't know whether... She was churning on the inside. We don't know whether she was just feeling really weighed down or heavy or whether she was in pain, but something didn't feel quite right. And so she prayed a monumental prayer, which I call Rebecca's Request. It's in this book, My Whole Heart. In fact, that's a a principle I talk about in nearly all of my books, Rebecca's Request. Because you see, When she didn't feel quite right, she went to the Lord, Genesis 22, verse 25. She inquired of the Lord and asked this question. She said, if all is well, then why am I like this? Now, I learned in those first few years of my healing journey, and I still do it today. If I find myself, I was ministering somewhere last year, and I'm looking at the lineup of speakers, and something in me is going, "Uh uh-oh, I don't really want to go there. Ooh, that doesn't feel good. I don't like this. And I'm like, what on earth am I reacting like this for? If all is well, Lord, then why am I looking at this particular lineup of speakers? and feeling intimidated. Why? And and you see, this is the amazing thing. When Rebecca prayed that prayer, the Bible is really clear that the Lord answered. And he said to her, Rebecca, you're carrying twins. And in the same way that God told Rebecca why she was feeling those symptoms, anytime you ask the Lord, if all is well, Lord, why am I feeling insecure? If all is well, then why do I think this type of person is better than me? If all is well, then why do I feel like I don't measure up? If all is well, then why? You know, if you're at church and the pastor walks by and doesn't say hello and you feel a bit rejected, if all is well, then why do I need him to notice me? You know, if you do something kind for somebody and they don't appreciate you, if all is well, Lord, then why do I need human appreciation? If all is well. You see, what we're doing is we're going to the Lord in the same way that if you had a rash, a fever, 
or if, you know, something was happening somewhere else in your body and you went to, to see a doctor, you would describe your symptoms, right? And you'd say, can you tell me what the underlying issue is? Insecurities are symptoms. Worrying what people think, it's a symptom. Comparing yourself with others, it's a symptom. Discouragement is very often a symptom. Feeling weighed down, sad, waking up in the morning with a sadness on the inside is a symptom. And if you will go to the Lord that day last year, I mean, you know, I went through such a deep healing journey when, my, when it all began 18 years ago. But last year, I was like, whoa, Lord. It was like you brought me back onto the operating table and started dealing with things that just was subtle. But why? Because he was taking me higher. And you see, if you want to go higher, God says, I want to go deeper. You look at any amazing high rise and it's gone deeper. And so... Every time I felt myself wobble about any kind of new situation, I would ask the Lord if all is well. And it's amazing how many times he took me back to things from my childhood, from my teenage years, from my adult life, and said, Joe, you need to bring this to me. So right now, I want to encourage you to make a decision. Will you decide to no longer dismiss insecurities, but instead see them as symptoms? Will you no longer think it's normal and okay to compare yourself with others? Will you decide, you know what, if I'm desperate for the approval of that leader, of that family member, of that person over here, then I'm gonna come to you, Lord, and say, if all is well, then why? Am I like this? Because this is the thing, my friend, if you will allow God to reveal the reasons why, he will reveal and then he will heal. And you will go from strength to strength. But not only will you become more secure, your intimacy with the Lord Jesus will grow as well. You know, think about the people who you know the best and you feel the closest to. Just think of someone right now. If you think, wow, I feel so close with that person. It's the people that you've shared the most of your heart and your life with, right? And you see, there's something so beautiful that happens when we go on a healing journey with the Lord of sharing. When God says, it's because when you were eight, your dad yelled at you, slammed that door on you, and it caused such a shaking on the inside. And then you get into your God's presence and you say, Lord, I was only eight years old when that happened. And it shattered my sense of trust. And I feel so broken, Lord. Father, it was horrible. What did I do wrong? And you pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. And not only will he heal you, but you're going to develop this new intimacy with the Lord God. Joan Hunter Ministries travels around the world sharing the healing power of God. Joan Hunter Ministries is touching lives all over the world through live streaming events, books and teachings, and our prayer call center where miracles happen daily. All of this is made possible by your prayers and support. When you partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, you not only bless those who receive the message, but you open a supernatural flow of blessing into your own life. Today is a day that my God's gonna supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Today is the day that God's going to point to me as an example of his incredible wealth. To become a monthly partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, call 1-281-789-7500 or go to joanhunter.org. Today is a day of alignment. Today is a day for financial breakthrough. Today is a day for your healing. Today is the day I don't have to wait any longer for the promises. Go to joanhunter.org to give a one-time gift or text any amount you'd like to give to 281 781-1507. Become a partner with Joan Hunter Ministries today. Miracles are happening everywhere, and now you can proclaim it everywhere you go with the Miracles Happen t-shirt and blanket. The t-shirts come in all sizes and a variety of colors, as well as with rhinestones and without. 
The Miracles Happen t-shirt is available for men and women. Get your shirt today and watch as God opens doors for you to pray for the sick around you. Both the Miracles Happen t-shirts and blanket are a constant reminder for all of us that miracles happen everywhere. And check out His Healing Promises. His Healing Promises is a selection of scriptures on healing read by Joan Hunter. If you need encouragement about your healing or faith to trust in God in a difficult time, this is for you. Let your spirit be lifted, your hope restored as you listen to God's healing promises over your life. Go to miraclesappen.tv now to order your Miracles Happen t-shirt, blanket, or your copy of His Healing Promises. Or call 281-789-7500. Hi, this is Joan Hunter. I just want to tell you, this is the most exciting year that I have ever experienced in my entire life. People say, retire, no, refire. This is the year that God has called this ministry to go way beyond what we've ever gone before. We are planning on right now, we have six countries in Africa scheduled. We have Pakistan scheduled, uh, Iceland scheduled, and many other places scheduled for next year for the year 2023. You have an opportunity to be a part of that and helping us get to where we need to go and feed the people spiritually, teach them about healing of finances, teach them about the healing of their body, not only that, but their mind and their soul and getting rid of trauma. One of the times that we have been in Africa to pray over the trauma and to see the people totally, completely set free of the trauma and the fear is absolutely amazing. I want you to be a part of what we're doing here at Joan Hunter Ministries in 2023. You can donate at joanhunter.org. Be sure to tag it missions. Any of you that would donate over $100 or more, then I wanna send you a copy of this book. And this is an awesome, amazing, miraculous book, Healings, Miracles, and Supernatural Experiences. Subtitle is Healing for Haiti. It's our experience that we had in Haiti. Uh, and there was many people that didn't have the money to go. We ended up and took 38 people who had to believe God for it. The, the expense was $250,000. We went down there totally debt free. And I'm, I'm gonna encourage you, it's gonna be probably somewhere between one and a half million to $2 million for our outreaches next year as we touch the world. And you get to be a part of that and the millions of people that are gonna to come to Jesus because of your donation and sending us around the world. And God bless you. Thanks for praying about it. God bless. I am so excited. I tell you what, I have found somebody who has my heart, which we have God's heart, because God wants our hearts healed, not bandaged. He wants our hearts healed. And we're kind of comparing notes on her book, my book, and, and her thinking, my thinking, and it is so together. And I'm like, I am so excited to share with you the revelation and the friendship of Joe Naughton. So just tell her, greet everybody and tell them hello. Absolutely. Hello. And it is wonderful to meet you, to be in your home with you today and to be coming all the way from London, England. Yes. Yes. And uh, God wants, he's healing hearts over the pond and he's healing hearts here. And God's given her incredible ministry here uh, in the United States, but especially in Florida. And all of a sudden somebody walks in, good friend of mine is a good friend of hers. We're like, oh! You know, it's been it's been pretty exciting. And then uh, two pastors in Florida, very good friends of mine that I one of them I grew up with over the last 40 years. And then another lady I've known for about 10 years, very good friends of hers. And they've ministered together. And, and I'm like, this is like so exciting. We didn't our paths just crossed last year. And, and I'm like, I have to have her in at Four Corners Conference Center because I want to share with the world the revelation that God's given her in the area of healing, in particular healing of trauma of hearts and different things like that. So share a little bit more about your background. Pick a book or two that you want to talk about. Absolutely. So, well, let me pick this one, My Whole Heart. Um, you know, so many times when people think about the heart, they think about inner healing, don't they? Right. And if you say the term inner healing, people associate that with certain types of childhood or adult wounds. But find me a person 
who won't realize, oh my goodness, you know, my heart hurts. I've gone through stuff. Life has thrown curveballs at me. And so one thing that I have learned over the years is that so many times we think that we are being held back because God's holding back our promises. We look at our lives and think, when is this going to happen? Why is things over here? But so many times the reason why we haven't yet stepped into what God has is because of the issues of our hearts. Mm -hmm. And so my whole heart looks at all the different aspects of the human heart. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times, I mean, one of the chapters in here is called, Whose Clothes Are You Wearing? Mm -hmm. And we all know that whatever God does, the devil will try and do a counterfeit version. And so there is the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. And we need to hold up the shield of faith. But the devil tries to get us to hold up the shield of denial. Right. Where, you know, if the truth of God's spirit comes, we're like, no, 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 that's not me. I don't need this. Or another one, the sword of the spirit. But then what the devil does is uses wounding words to, to, to cripple people on the inside. And so my whole heart deals with so many different aspects of the human heart that people don't even realize could be the reason why they haven't yet stepped into their promises. Mm -hmm. I mean- And fear of getting hurt again. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. a big one. And, and that's something I've got a chapter in my book, Lifting the Mass, called The Fear of History Repeating Itself. Mm -hmm. And so many times we go through something and afterwards we may be a bit healed, but we're not fully healed right. until we're no longer afraid of it happening again. Because it will. It will. Uh, it, absolutely. It will. You, you know, you will be betrayed again. And because so, there's life. Because as long as you're life. alive, you will yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so we've got to get healed enough of the betrayals and the letdowns and the hurts that we've gone through so that we know, you know what, I will get betrayed again. Mm -hmm. But when I get betrayed again... <laughs> With a again, smile on her face. Yeah, oh, we will be betrayed again. <laughs> I'll get even more deeply healed. Right. And therefore, my heart will grow even bigger mm -hmm. and I'll have, have even more love to give to others. And one thing... Uh, after I went through my divorce in the year 2000, uh, a couple of years after that, I was dealing with, you know, I, I've, I was still having problems because of the previous marriage and, you know, and all this stuff was coming in and they told me to renounce the soul ties. And so I did that. But then I, I told this like a brother of mine and I said, I don't understand what's happening with him still coming into my thought life. And he says, well, you're still in covenant. I said, well, I renounce the soul ties. Soul ties, friends can have soul ties, but a marriage couple has a covenant. So I said, okay, get me out of this covenant. So God, I renounced the covenant in Jesus' name. Anything bad that came in through the covenant, take it from me now in Jesus' name. Whew, I mean, it never came back in. It was great. It was amazing. Because the covenant, he has a right to come in. Absolutely. And so I shut that door so he didn't do it. And so he says, like the next day, he goes, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing really good. He goes, you're doing really good with that wall in your heart. And I said, I don't have a wall, you know? And of course, the arms went forward to form the wall, you know, and uh, and so I I went home to I went to the hotel room, and I said, God, I don't want to have a wall up. I can't be loved, nor can I love with a wall up. Yeah. But if I put the wall down, I'm going to be hurt again. Yeah. And just like you're saying. Yeah. And but you you take that risk of being hurt again. But you, you have to, or you'll never be loved again. Yeah. And you really can't love the people that you're ministering to. Yeah. And so I had to, like, okay, remove the wall, protect my heart. And then what's neat is that I now have the tools, if somebody hurts me, I have the tools to not let it hurt me, hurt me as deeply as I was hurt before. Absolutely, absolutely. And... You know where it says, it's probably both of our, one of our favorite scriptures, Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. And mm -hmm. that word guard, it's a really interesting one mm -hmm. because people misunderstand what that scripture means. Mm -hmm. That word guard is a, is a Hebrew word, nasa, and it can be used both offensively and defensively. It can be used both positively and negatively. Now that doesn't mean 
put up a wall around your heart. Right. To stop yourself ever being hurt. No, it means more like tend your heart like you would a garden. Mm -hmm. And when we've got walls up, just we've like got you weeds, said. Get rid of the weeds. Yes, yes, absolutely. And when we've got walls up, we can't be loved. We can't love. God is love. And right. therefore, we can't have the kind of relationship with him that we want. But when instead we bring the walls down and we say, Lord, heal my hurts. Do something deep on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. And then I loved what you said, Joan, which was you learned how to reach a point of so much healing that although you knew you'd be hurt again in the future, it wouldn't hurt as much. And this is, this is something people don't realize. The more we get healed of the stuff of the past and that it's a really deep thing, and, and structurally, our hearts have been restored. Then when we get hurt in the future, yes, we will be hurt, mm -hmm. but it won't be anywhere near as foundational in the way it hurts us. Mm -hmm. And we can be restored so much more quickly. Absolutely. God takes everything I go through and puts it into a book. You know, and like my testimony of overcoming betrayal in my life is, while well, I'm familiar with my book, Healing of the Heart, and how God went in and had to heal me, but he healed me in my body, my mind, my soul, my spirit, finances, got healed of broken heart syndrome. You don't even know what broken heart syndrome is, but we've got to get our hearts healed because, you know, I think I look pretty good for 70, 70 and a half actually already, but, but it's because my heart's been healed. And if I was dealing with broken heart syndrome still and, and unforgiveness, betrayal and abandonment, all that I've gone through since conception, because my father left, my natural father left before I was born. Actually, my mom left because he tried to kill her, but that's another story. That's in, in, in her book. But the point is, is that my mom ran for her life. So I was abandoned by my father. I met him when I was 16, okay? So you're dealing with abandonment issues and fear of your husband leaving you. And then you get codependent and no matter what he's doing, he can't go because of that abandonment issue. Yeah. And then, you know, then you're dealing with codependency. And I got, you know, all that stuff in there. But I got healed of all that. So I thank God for that. Absolutely. And, you know, got healed of breast cancer and, and broken heart syndrome. And, you know, and so and it's like we've got a platform to talk on what it's like to lose one of the most precious things that God's ever given you. Yeah. You know, and to lead, lose your, your life, your dream, co-pasturing, your whole future, everything. And then all of a sudden you're marked with a big D. Yeah. You know, and how God just, he, you know, made up the difference and he's using me. But, but I have a heart to help people. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the healing of my own heart. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's just awesome. Yeah, and, and I remember as God started to heal my heart, because I started a healing journey about 18 years ago, and it all started where I faced a moment of truth, where I realized that my whole life was wrapped up in job titles, and, and, and God just began me on this healing journey. And over the probably between three and five years, of just going on this healing journey, I ended up where all the insecurities dropped off, all the fear of man, the people pleasing. And I got out the other side and I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was such a peace and a joy and a security available. And so all I wanted to do mm -hmm. was bring others on this journey of healing. Right, and uh, is the which one is the, the mask one? Do we have that one here with us? Yes, we okay. do. Okay, yeah. because she was talking about lifting the mask, you know, of you've you've hidden behind the mask of your husband. Yeah, you could you hide behind the mask of your job, you know, the the, pan, the pandemic stuff that happened a few years ago. That was not the first time people have been wearing masks. No, you know, and then uh, and it's just absolutely amazing. And it's like I have one that's called the real you. I had to discover who I was, mm -hmm. not not Charles or Francis Hunter's daughter, not this, not that, and not their parents, and not his wife, not you know, blah 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 blah. That was just stuff I did. Yeah. But I had to figure out who I was. And when I removed the mask of what people thought I was, yeah. okay, and really looked and said, who am I? Yeah. God revealed to who I am. And then what's so cool is that I fell in love with me. Yeah. Because the Word of God says, love your neighbor as yourself. You cannot love if you don't love yourself. Yeah. 
Absolutely. These are all great resources for you. And I know you are sitting there going, please, please keep going, keep going. Well, we're going to do another show in just a little bit, but we have to cut it off for today. And I, I really don't want to, but you've already gotten a whole lot from her out of the pulpit too. And I just want to thank you so much for watching us today. And, and we're going to just really pray here really quick for God to touch your heart. I know that God has opened up your eyes regarding certain areas of your heart today. Wow, maybe I need to remove that mask. Maybe I do need to renounce that covenant that I had. Maybe I need to, that's exactly why we're here, is to do that. So I'm gonna have you start off praying, Absolutely. and uh, and then I'll follow up and we'll close up okay. the show after that. Yeah. Father, I just wanna thank you for each person watching. And Lord God, each one whose identity and validity is wrapped up in their jobs, even their ministry, in their titles, their positions. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that from today that they would take that sense of validity away from what they do, from who they're married to or whose son or daughter they are. And Father, I pray that you would start a new work in their hearts so that they'd know that their true validity comes from who they are to you. Father, do what only you can do, I pray in Jesus' name. And put your hands on your heart. Father, right now, I just thank you. I thank you that today is about getting your heart and getting our hearts healed. So Father, right now, I thank you for going through this camera to every single person who's watching, watching in their heart. And Father, I thank you for going in and getting out any kind of trauma, betrayal, abandonment, rejection, so many more words I could name right now. But Father, I thank you for touching their hearts and healing their hearts today. Hallelujah. Jesus. Father, only you can do that. And I just wanna really encourage you to get some of these resources and we'll have them listed on the show, et cetera. And you also go to joanhunter.org, miraclesappen.tv uh, and you can get more information on these. And I really wanna encourage you, don't just leave it here. You know, there's so much more. Get your heart back. Do this, do this. Remove the mask. Get rid of any kind of shame. This is a wealth of information here based on what we have been through. Not going in, in, in but we've been through it. Now we're telling you, we're saying, come on, let's get through it. Thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you next week on Miracles Happen. Miracles Happen. Thanks for watching Miracles Happen. Contact us at miraclesHappen.tv or give us a call at 1-281-789-7500 or connect with Joan on Facebook at facebook.com slash Joan Hunter. And make sure to join us next week for Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles happen.